Um, I was very young when we started ministry, and we started, we just, we just built based on zeal and what God was leading. But for the first time, God is giving us opportunity to build, amen, to build, to lay the foundations of what we want to see. And so, um, we are in no rush or no hurry, because we know that if you have a very solid and a good foundation, you can build something that can last, something strong, something solid, praise the Lord. Now, look at this one. It says, a, 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 a wise man can build on rock because it's possible to build on sand. But if you want to build something that will last, and I want you to, um, each and every one of you to really take this importantly because it's not just about a church. Even in your personal life, tomorrow you want to start a business. This same attitude will help you. Tomorrow you want to you know, get into a relationship or marriage. A solid foundation is very important. Laying a solid foundation is very important. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He says, I will liken a person to be wise who builds on solid rock. Show me 25. Verse 25. Verse 25. He says, and the rain descended. Why? Because rain will come. Amen. Rain will surely come. Just like what I was saying right now. A moment in your life is going to come where you are going to be tested. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, um, when I look at look back at what happened in the last, you know, for many years, I was, you know, like, you know, I, I always love to testify about God's um, hand upon my life and I had stayed in health. For many years, I had no, no issue with my health whatsoever, no sickness, nothing whatsoever. And then all of a sudden, in a moment from nowhere, my health became my primary challenge. Amen. It was not... Money, it was not anything. It's as though there was that one thing. Why? Why? Because rain will come. Amen. Rain will come. It says, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell not, praise the Lord. It did not fall. For it was what? Founded on, upon a rock. Amen. That's why our foundation is so important. When it comes to relationships and marriage, rain will fall. Amen. The flood will come. The wind will come. There are going to be things that will test your marriage, that will test your relationship, that will test you. But if you have a solid rock of a foundation, you'll be fine. Even us as a church. That's why we're trying to lay a solid foundation now. So that come 15, 10, 20 years time, we'll still be standing strong. Because we laid a solid foundation. Amen. Praise the Lord. So far we have looked at a few things um, of those foundations, some of which my wife just went over. Now we're going to go into some. But I wanted to set this precedence. Amen. It says why? Because it had a foundation upon rock. We are trying to have rock. We are putting the right resource, the right material. So that any person who is going to join tomorrow, in a year's time, they will know the kind of church they are joining. It will not be a secret. They will know, okay, Oh, who are you guys? We are people who love. Amen. Praise God. We are people who trust. We are people of righteousness. Amen. We are people of joy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, uh, go with me to the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. Amen. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 10th verse. Another time we find the same um, occurrence in scripture. 1 Corinthians 3 from verse 10. Praise the Lord. He says, according to the grace, this is Apostle Paul, according to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds thereon. But let every man take it how he builds thereupon. So God is going to ask us, how did you build? Amen. How did you build the foundation? What kind of foundation did you build for your children? Amen. What kind of, what kind of building? What did you build? You know, because the wind, remember, the wind will come. Even fire will come. Show me the next verse. We're going to keep reading. It says, for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Keep going. 
We're going to verse 15, all the way to verse 15. Verse 12. He said, now, if any man build upon this foundation with gold or silver or precious stones or wood or hay or stubble. Do you see this? These are different materials. So, for the first time, as a people, as a church, we have, God is saying, you, what are you going to build with? Amen. And what we want to build, we want to build with something solid. Not hay, not stubble. Amen. He said, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire. You are going to be tested. You are going to be checked out. Amen. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Show me verse 14. Verse 14. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So if we're going, we're going to only get a reward when we build with something solid. Amen. So please stay with me and be patient with me when we keep when it seems as if we are staying on foundational things. It's important. Amen. Because we have a future that we have in mind. Amen. Show me, show me the last one. Okay, 15. He says, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. We don't want to suffer loss again. Amen. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> the Bible says any man who rushes or who hastens to wealth, he says he will come to poverty. You know, one of the things that a lot of people, especially when you're young, you are trying to arrive too quickly. You are in a hurry. And you forget that a solid foundation is important. God wants us to be wise builders. Let's lay a solid foundation. Let's take, for example, relationship. Relationship. I've seen that, you know, um, I mean, in my years, I pastored, I pastored a lot of youths. And I saw that the problem with many people is they were, they, people were always in a hurry. Let the foundation be solid. Amen. Let the foundation be solid. And that foundation starts from you. You know, I always like to speak about Mr. Right and Miss Right. If both of you are right, you have a higher chance of laying a right foundation. I don't know if somebody. A, a relationship that can lead to marriage. Praise the Lord. I love, I love what one of, um, one, of my, one of the sons said, um, Pastor Francis. You know, when I sent him invitation for um, my, my wedding for my, with my wife, he said, you two people that are already married since in your mind. You're, you're, if, 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 if you were already decided from the beginning about marriage. Even though we, we still dated for about four years. But the foundation was solid. It was just the formalities of the marriage that were not yet done. I don't want to sing to somebody. We had solid foundations. And of course, I, I love to share it. Just as an example, so someone can learn from. You know, I remember the first time when we decided to go into the to go into a relationship. We both got in together. We knelt down. We prayed. The day she said yes to me, we knelt down. We prayed. We anointed each other before God. There, were, it was not a case of let's test and see where this is going. We knew where we were going. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. The foundation was clear. It was not, oh, let's see what will come out of this. No. We knew what was going to come out of it. Praise the Lord. Why? The foundation was solid. Praise the Lord. God wants Sogi's foundation to be solid too. So far, we have looked at a couple of things. We've looked at love. Amen. We've looked at righteousness. We've looked at peace. We've looked at joy. Amen. The kind of things we see, want to see in the house. Trust. Amen. Freedom. We say we want you to be free. Amen. We want you to be free. We want sincerity. Amen. So gives people. We want truth. Don't fake things. Amen. It's not going to help anybody. Be you. Amen. Be you. All right? You like wearing suit to church? Wear suit. Amen. Praise God. You like being casual? Be casual. Amen. Be you. The, the Bible says in the presence of the Lord, there is what? Liberty. There is freedom. We looked at that last week. Today, we want to look at three other things. Three very key ones. Amen. That are very important 
for this particular church. Amen. Number one is accountability. Amen. So me accountability. Accountability. Amen. Praise the Lord. In Luke 16 from verse 1. Luke 16 from verse 1. Luke the 16th chapter from the first verse. Accountability. Amen. We encourage accountability. Amen. We really encourage it. Not just from members to pastor. Okay. Or we encourage it as a culture in this church. Amen. You are better off giving accounting than not giving accounting. Amen. And today he says, um, let, let's just read it. And he said also unto his disciples, there was a certain rich man which had a steward. Say me, steward. We are stewards of God's um, things, God's properties. Okay? The, the, the office, the ministries, we are stewards of it. He says, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Show me verse 2. Verse 2. And the master called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of you? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Amen. God expects us at a moment, at a certain moment, to give account. To give what? Account. Amen. And I want to, I want to study this starting from the head, from the church. Um, by the grace of God, our church is still young, but we're going to do yearly re re reviews and stewardship. Amen. Uh, um, our accountability to tell you about where we stand, what we received, amen, as a church, what we spent, right? There is no secret. I think um, literally everybody here knows how much, you know, we are paying for the church auditorium, right? And um, thank you for your givings. My wife spoke about tithing those earlier on. For those who are giving tithes, of, of course, those are, um, those are the things currently, the current needs of the church. And if we are spending anything, those are what the needs, the, the, the resources or the incomes that you are giving will be used for to take care of the church needs. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we intend to make it not just now. We intend to imbibe that culture of accountability, giving account to you so that you'll be aware of what the givings you are giving, uh, whatever you are giving, are being used for. Praise the Lord. Uh, that's, we, want to, we want transparency. Last week we spoke about truth. Amen. We want transparency. It's easier to trust when there is transparency. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. It's easier to trust when there is transparency. And that's the culture we want to set, up, we want to set here. Praise the Lord. We want, to be, we want you to trust and we want you to be able to trust us. Praise the Lord. So that tomorrow if someone is saying something outside, like in this case where someone is accused, you can yourself know. You don't need to sit here from a third party. You know. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, life is funny. Praise God. Um, I remember my, my, my car in Ukraine. Amen. Um, some of the sons bought me a car. Praise the Lord. And um, the next thing, the next, the next thing I hear is they say he's using church money to buy car. Amen. Praise God. And uh, it's amazing. Praise God. <laughs> you know, and um, because people will always talk. People are not inside. In their mind, they have things they can assume, presume. You know, but in an environment where there is accountability, it makes it easier. For you to know that, okay, no such thing is happening. Praise the Lord. We intend to do that. But beyond that, when it comes to accountability, we want to really encourage every person here to be able to, to be comfortable to give accounting at your personal level. Amen. Um, when, you are, when, 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 you are, when you are accountable, it helps you to stay in line. It helps you to stay in line. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, for me, for example, I think, I think you know, um, Especially when it comes to walking in righteousness and holiness. The devil has a lot of power. He, 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 he thrives when you are struggling in secret. But when things come out in the open, you, it's easier for you. All right? For example, I have sons, I have daughters who um, give accounts. For example, about their, their sexual life. Someone tells you like, you know what, um, pastor, this is, this is my, uh, what do you call it, my letter of consecration, my covenant with God that I want to keep myself. And I'm going to tell you how I'm doing and faring. You didn't ask them. But it's helping them stay in line to do the right things. 
for somebody where you need accounting is in your finances. Amen. Another person, it's in your relationship. Right? It's easier when you have two people, for example, I try to tell people sometimes, one of the reasons why some relationships end is there is nobody they're accounting to. The guy is reckless with the girl's heart. The girl doesn't care about the guy. Before you know it, it falls apart. We want to encourage accountability in this church. Amen. If you like, you can call it vulnerability, whatever it is, to the extent to which you can. It's not by force, but whatever you think by accounting will help you be better. Please, it is welcomed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We see this place here. The Bible says, the master asked, he says, give account of your stewardship. Tell me what has been happening to you. Tell me what you have been doing. Amen. What did you do this week? How is your Bible study life? How is your praying life? Amen. Do you know it's possible to go one whole month without praying? Amen. It's possible to go six months without praying. It's possible to go six months without opening your Bible. If there is no accountability, because there's no person to report to, to check out with, before you know it, you have done six months. And yet, once upon a time, there was one, there was you who could not live without the scripture. You used to read the Bible. You enjoyed it. You just go, 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 go. You enjoyed talking about it. But now, before you know it, six months has gone. We encourage you to be accountable. Amen. If nothing, about spiritual things of your life so that you can be in a better place. Hallelujah. Amen. Of course, we are adults. We cannot be forced. Romans 14 from verse 12. Romans 14 verse 12. Romans the 14th chapter, the 12th verse. Romans 14 verse 12. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, so then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You see this right now. So this accounting um, thing is in the kingdom. It's part of the kingdom. We are supposed to be a people who are accountable. We are supposed to be a people who are accountable. And we rehearse it in church. Amen. So that we can do it before God. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. So that's the first thing. We are an accountable church. We are what? An accountable church, an accountable people. Amen. The second thing is justice. Amen. For today, justice. Tell me justice. Equality. Amen. In Acts 6 verse 1, Acts 6 verse 1, you know, justice is one of those things that are so crucial in the church. If a church is going to thrive, there has to be justice. Amen. It means there should be fairness. As much as possible, there should be Every person's voice should be heard. Look at this. His Bible says, in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. If you don't want trouble in your church, let there be justice. Amen. Treat people right. Treat people fairly. It says, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Amen. Certain people were being treated different from others. We don't want that here. Amen. We want what? Justice. God says, you know, Jesus Christ went on to say, you know, um, okay, I, th I think we'll just go there. Let's just go there. It's easier for me, amen, to preach with it. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Psalms 82 verse 3. Psalms 82 verse 3. Then I'll line it up with this. Amen. The earlier church, the, the earliest church almost divided because there was no fairness. There was no equality. There was no equality. He said, defend the poor and the fearless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. That's what I'm talking about. We want a, an environment, a culture where the So to say, the person who is the, the wealthy and the person who is not so wealthy are treated fairly. Amen. Jesus Christ tried to speak of a culture. He says, he says and, and, and I think Paul also said the same thing. Um, he said, you don't have to um, give the front row of seats to the biggest of people. Amen. No. You know, the word of God says, he said, God is not a respecter of persons. Amen. He's not a respecter of persons. He's a respecter of principles. 
we should give honor to whom it is due, okay? But we should not dishonor certain people. Just because someone is not a high hanger doesn't mean that his voice should not be heard. Doesn't mean that he should not be treated right. I'm not talking to somebody right now. Jesus came to minister justice. We are ministers of justice. He said, do justice to the afflicted. We want Sogis to be known as a church where there is fairness. Where every person can say something. Where every person's voice can be heard. If there's something that is hurting you, we want you to be heard. If you, you know, we don't want to say, oh, no, you know, like a uh, pastor only has time for some of the people, you know, some of the people who are giving the big givers in church. We don't want that. We want fairness. Amen. That's why we're talking about there is freedom, okay? There is accountability. We, you know, th there is space for you. Amen. Praise God. You know, I always like to say this. I keep an open door policy. My door is open. You know, come. Amen. If, if, if you don't tell me, I'm not going to know. Praise God. Talk to me. I'm here for you. I'm here to pastor. I'm not pastor of only the people that sit in front. I'm not pastor of only people who are very close to me. I'm pastor to all. You got something? Bring it on. Amen. I'll make time. Praise the Lord. He said, do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Not just for the rich. He says, no. Defend everybody. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Let there be justice. That was the sign of the wisdom of Solomon. Amen. Solomon was able to bring fairness. He was able to bring justice to the environment. And, the, and he lived long. The, 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 the Israel lived in peace. The one way to tear down your church is for there to be inequality. Before you know it, there begins to be a divide. One group feels treated right. One other group feels not treated right. One group feels like, oh, he, he, you know, um, he, has, he has more time for these people. He has less time for us. Amen. We don't want that here. Amen. We want fairness. Praise God. And we want that culture across every place, including at departmental levels. Amen. Fairness. Justice. Hallelujah. Let's take one more. Amen. Let's take one more along that line. Acts 10 verse 34. I made reference to it earlier on. Acts 10 verse 34. He says, God is no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of persons. Praise the Lord. Is it coming on? Amen. He says, Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. So it didn't matter that this man was a Gentile. God was good to him. Amen. So we don't do good only to certain people. Amen. We do good to all. If we can help, we want to help all. Amen. If we can assist, we want to assist all. If we can pray, we want to pray for all. We don't want to pray specially, amen, for one person than we have another person, you know, amen. When the front, front row person um, um, is having issues, oh, we send visitors there. When the person behind is having issues, you don't have time for the person. No, we want fairness, amen. That's the culture we want to imbibe, we want to live with. And, you, you know, someone, you may not understand why this is important because, you know, when you set this foundation now, and we keep coming back to it. It will keep us in line as we get bigger as a church. Am I talking to somebody? They say the way you lay your bed, that's how you're going to lie on it. We are laying our bed. We want to be a fair church. All right? We want to be a fair church. We want the love to go round. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The last one, the last thing we're looking at today, uh, where we will spend much of our time, is balance. Tell me balance. Balance. Amen. Balance. Um, I've always been an advocate for balance. Sogis. We want Sogis to be known as a church of balance. Hello? We want your life to be a balanced life. Okay? And um, let's, 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 let's take this one. Proverbs 11 verse 1. I don't know if you have Amplified. It would be nice if you do. Proverbs 11 verse 1. If you have amplified, let me know. If you don't, then um, you could use King James and I'll see how to work around it. Amen. Can you find that for me? Amen. Look at this. It says a false balance. It's there. King James is good enough. Amen. A false balance is what? An abomination to the Lord. 
Whenever we are not in balance, it's not what God wants. So, our lives must be balanced. So, we balance. Amen. <laughs> Hello? God wants your life balanced. God is a balanced God. Amen. Is a balanced God. It doesn't like extremism where you are on one hand and then you're on the other hand. You know, the struggle of the church, which, have, which I observed over the years, is the fact that many times you don't, people cannot have balance. But God was a person of balance. Jesus is a person, was a person of balance while on earth. You see, Jesus Christ, as, as, as spiritual as Jesus was, he had time to go for a wedding. Amen. He had time to visit people. He's praying all night and the next moment he's visiting. Amen. He had time to eat. It was not all, you know, oh, just pray, 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 win, so pray, 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 win, so pray, pray, pray. So there was balance. Praise the Lord. There was what? Balance. The same thing with us as a people. We are going to touch different areas of our lives. God wants all areas of our life to be touched. It's not just going to be one thing. Amen. So while we'll be doing spiritual, we'll be doing financial. Some people don't like financial when you come to church. Don't talk finance. Don't talk money. No. That's, Sogis is not that church. In Sogis, we like everything. Amen. God wants you to have, to be prosperous. Amen. Can you go to 3 John verse 2? 3 John verse 2, King James. It says, I wish above all things that you what prosper, okay? And what be in health, even as your soul is prospering. So, it's not just about um, your soul. He wants what? Your health. God is interested in health. Am I talking to somebody? God doesn't just want only spiritual. Let us pray. Let us pray. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. He says, I want you to be spiritually prospering, and I want you to be prospering financially, and I want you to be prospering in your health. So me balance. So me balance. So this has to be a balanced church. All right? We want to be relevant people. I love the way man of God put it. Don't just be of earthly of heaven uh, significance, but be of earthly nuisance. We want to matter. In this earth, we want to what? Matter. When God blessed Abraham, what did he say to him? He says, I'll make you great on earth. We don't just want to be a people that know, ah, Daniel is a very spiritual man. But Daniel is broke. We misrepresent God that way. Am I talking to somebody? We want to represent God spiritually. We want to represent God physically. We want to represent God financially. We want to represent God in our looks. Amen. In the way we speak. Amen. We want to represent him all round. That's what we call balance. By balance, I mean... Let every area of your life be progressing. Your relationship progressing. Your marriage be progressing. Amen. Everything. We want everything. The whole deal. Amen. Tell me the whole deal. Can you go to Matthew 6 verse 33? What does the Bible say? It says, seek first what? The kingdom. And his righteousness. And what? Everything shall be added. Not just only the kingdom. You know, we make it something and we look as if it has to be kingdom. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you talking about? How does that affect the kingdom? No, but God says, not only, it's not only the kingdom. We are, God, we are for the kingdom. We are for the righteousness and for every other thing. And if you read the Bible correctly, the verses before this, he, the, what was the every other thing? He said the clothes to wear. Amen. The food to eat. The place to live in. Amen. God wants every area of your life to progress. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. We're excited. About, we thank God about the testimonies. Amen. Because that's balance. That's balance. Different areas of your life picking up. You know, you know, there's a car. That's balance. 
you know, um, there's a job. That's balance. There is visa. That's balance. Things are happening. You know, good things are happening. You know, we, we want to be excited about the various things that are happening in your life that are, that are good. Amen. You have to realize there's a reason why God saved us. After saving us, he kept us still on earth. If, if earth was useless, it would have taken us straight up to where? Heaven. So me balance. Balance. We want it to be that when people hear about Sogis or when they look at you and your life, they know that you're a balanced person. Because when, you, when, they, when it comes to spiritual things, you are talking spiritual. When it comes to financial, you are talking financial. Amen. When you talk, talk, come to look at you, you know, how, how can you be very spiritual? I'm sure you are not doing anything. You must be a jobless person or anything. And they're surprised that you are making good monies. You have a good job. You have everything is moving in your life. This is what we call balance. So we balance. Balance. The balance of spiritual and physical. Amen. Where no area is lacking. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added. So we want all the things to be added. How are they going to be added? We talk about them. We teach them. Amen. We tell God's people about them. That God wants you healed. Amen. That God wants you healthy. Amen. That God wants you smelling nice. Amen. That God wants you dressing nice. Amen. That God wants you, you know, um, having the best of things, the best of places. Amen. Praise the Lord. That God wants you to marry right. God wants you happy. Wants you to have children. Balance. He doesn't just want you only praying. Of course he wants you praying. He wants you fasting. He wants you studying the word. But he also wants you doing these things. I don't know if someone is with me. Hallelujah. Why, why is it important and why are we saying it? Because these are going to form the contents of the church. Because one day you hear us speaking about the Holy Ghost and we are praying in tongues. The next service you come and you hear us talking about money. Don't feel like, oh, am I still in church? You are in church, amen. Or the next thing you hear us talking about business, amen. How to grow your business. And you're like, you know, am I in a business seminar? You are in church, amen. Balance, tell me balance. Balance, very important. Hallelujah. Luke 12, verse 7. Show me Luke 12, verse 7. Luke, the 12th chapter, the 7th verse. Luke 12, verse 7. Amen. He said, but even the very hairs of your head are what? Numbered. Who concerns God with my hair? Amen. Because he's interested in every part of you. Am I talking to somebody? Is interested in your in your hairs, amen. Is interested in the your weight. Hallelujah. Is interested in your in every detail. That's what it means. He said the very hairs of your head are numbered. He knows everything. He's interested in your nails, amen. Praise God. Praise God. If the hairs are numbered, what about the nails? He can see them. Amen. He knows the, what you wear this morning. That's why he's concerned about what you're eating. That you're eating right and eating healthy. Praise the Lord. I shared the story of the son the other time who was going fasting and he had gone seven days dry, you know. And um, before he went into, the, into, into fasting and praying, God revealed it to me. And by the seventh day, he was going to go more. Amen. He wanted to stretch it all the way up to 10. And I saw in a vision that it was going to be tough for him. And God said, tell him to end it. Amen. Because God wants you fasting, but he doesn't want you dying, amen, from fasting. He's interested in every detail. He's interested, not just in the spiritual, he's interested in your physical. Because sometimes we think God does not care, amen. It matters to God, amen. It matters what? Amen. 
It matters to God. Everything concerns him. The hairs of your head. Tell me the hairs of my head are numbered. Hallelujah. Tell me he knows me by name. Amen. Do you think he does, if, if the hairs of your head are numbered, you think he doesn't know your bank account? You think God don't know how much you have right now? You think he doesn't know that maybe your money is reducing? Amen. You think he's not working out a way to replace and bring more for you? He's interested in every detail. Am I talking to somebody? He will come through for you. He will come through for us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to me. God knows your bills. He knows your bills. He knows your dreams and your aspirations. And he will not disappoint you. He will not fail you. Let's conclude with 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians, sorry, 1 verse 5. 1 Corinthians 1, the fifth verse. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 5. And we will be done. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 5. Hallelujah. Do you see this one? It says, I want you that in everything you be enriched by him. You see this? Tell me everything. God wants me rich in everything. Tell me God wants me rich in everything. You see this now? Everything is everything. God wants you to have a rich spiritual life, a rich financial life, a rich physical life, a rich health life. Rich knowledge, rich speech. It says that you be enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. When you open your mouth to speak, they know that you are something, you have weight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage somebody. God is just taking my heart now. Don't lose hope. Amen. Don't forget the goals and the plans that you had at the beginning of the year. It is possible. Hello? It is possible to reach those goals and those targets. Amen. Now, at the beginning of the year, God spoke to us about savings. This year, listen to me. Listen to this. Listen to this. God will make sure to supply you so that you have enough savings. In the name of Jesus Christ. To accomplish those goals and those targets that you have in mind. In the name of Jesus. He says that you be rich by him in all things, in all utterance, and in what? All knowledge. He's interested in every area. So we balance. So we balance. Hallelujah. So, Sogis, get ready for this one. We are going to be a balanced church. Our events, our special services are going to reflect it. You're going to find us talk, having relationship or marriage programs. You are going to see us having business programs, okay? You are going to see us having parenting programs. Am I talking to somebody, talking to somebody right now? You're going to see us having um, different career programs. Why? Because we are considering the holistic man. Career programs, things that can put you in a better place. Family oriented programs. Why? Because all of these areas, God has a word for them, and all of them are important. Praise the Lord. Do you see God speaking one time about family? He says, He says, He says, He says, um, He says, A man should provide for his house. Speaking of what? Prosperity and provision. Is interested in every detail. It didn't just say a man should pray for his house. A man should be a prophet for, of, of his house or be a priest of his house only. No, he says a man should provide also. Why? He's interested in every what? Detail. Hallelujah. So me, God is interested in every detail. 
every detail. Amen. That's why we begin from we began from Proverbs 11 verse 1. It says, a false balance is an abomination. When one area is very good and another area is so bad, you can pray so well, but you have bad character. God says, what is this? What is this? It is an abomination. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are very spiritual, but you have no control of your emotions. God does not want that. Amen. So good, we go with balance. We are going to grow with this balance, this attitude, so that we can raise children who will not be afraid to associate with us. Amen. Who will not be associate, uh, afraid to associate with us because they think that we don't understand, we don't care, we don't, we don't know what they are going through. No. It's balance. It's balance. Hallelujah. Amen. I'd like us to be on our feet. We're going to pray. We're going to pray and then we're going to conclude. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to pray. Say, Father, every imbalance in my life, every area of my life that is not yet balanced, balance it for me in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. If there's an area of your life where there is a struggle that things have not leveled up yet, Say, Father, I want to be balanced. I want my finances balanced. I want my career balanced. I want my relationship balanced. I thank you for these other areas that are doing well. I want this other area good too. I want my spiritual life balanced. I want my Bible study balanced. I want a true balance of my emotion, my health in the name of Jesus Christ. My look my speech, my education. We are praying. La kaba shokotolo mundo irakasaka tebrodo. Balanced in the name of Jesus. Sogis is known for balance. Sogis is known to be balanced in the name of Jesus. We are people of balance. La kapa teka te shagam bronon de genzi melekito koporo katia gadude ereberedia do. Shegende de Nemendo Sete, Le Procoshila Grande Kitolobo, Iranin Dons Ginde de Beredi Eteke, a people of balance, a people of balanced in the name of Jesus. No false weight, no false weight, no false skill, no false balance in the name of Jesus. We are balanced on the inside. Emotional balance, spiritual balance, financial balance career balance, all areas of our life come up hither in the name of Jesus. We are prospering in health. We are prospering in our relationships. We are prospering in our marriage. We are prospering in our careers. We are prospering in our soul. We are advancing and progressing. No area is left behind. There is no extreme extremism in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, good God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's so much as a parent can do, as a father or mother. You know, there's so much as a pastor also can do. But I've seen, like we also see even in scripture, sometimes when a man of God is doing so much, he's so busy with the work of God, at the expense of his family. Sometimes it's why some children, pastors' children, they go rogue. Because well, there was no balance. It is better to do ministry small. Okay? And have balance with your raising of your children, your job or any such things, than to do ministry great and your children be a reproach. I don't know if I'm speaking to somebody right now. We're going to pray again. Father, anything that would make me imbalanced, 
anything that would make me lose focus of important areas of my life. Father, remove them from my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and pray. Everything that will make me neglect a certain area of my life. Everything that will make me to not be balanced anymore. Father, remove it. Remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything, any disguise, any trickery, any manipulation, any enticement, no matter how good it is, that would destabilize the balance. Father, remove it. I don't want to be a part of any abomination. I don't want to be a part of anything that you do not like. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that I will be known as a man of balance, a father of balance, a husband of balance, a pastor of balance, a friend of balance, a son of balance. In the name of Jesus Christ, help me to be a balanced person. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, good father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may not understand this, but I heard a man of God one time say to me by himself at the time of divorce, amen. He said the following words about his wife. He said, he said, they only taught us to pray. He said, nobody taught me to treat my wife right. Because in all of those years of their marriage, she was neglected, treated not nicely, and things just went haywire until the day she served him divorce. We don't want that. Amen. Praise the Lord. We want couples, marriages to thrive. That's what we stand for. Balance. We want you to love your wife or your husband the way you love God and serve God in the church. May God help us to be balanced people in the name of Jesus Christ. May God help us to approach Christianity, the faith, our spiritual life with a sense of balance in Jesus' name. May that balance reflect in every area of our life. In our businesses, our jobs, our relationships, in the name of Jesus Christ. Our academics, our Bible study, may we carry every area along in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Celebrate God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen.